Taking oral progesterone is a common supplementation scenario, particularly for women as they head into menopause because it really helps oftentimes with issues associated with sleep that are associated with menopause. When you're testing progesterone, you can effectively use a good serum test, a good urine test, or a good saliva test when people aren't taking hormones. When they get on oral progesterone, it gets a little bit complicated and you really run into issues if you're trying to use serum or saliva testing to monitor the therapy. And here's why. If you look at the kinetics following the supplementation of oral progesterone, which is usually taken at bedtime, you'll find that the values of circulating progesterone are gonna start off low, and then they're gonna go up just a little bit and back down very quickly. It just takes a couple of hours to return to baseline. What you'll also find, which is a little bit complicated, is that the standard laboratory tests that you use for progesterone actually cross-react with all the metabolites that are formed, so you get a lot of metabolites that look a little bit like progesterone, and there are so many of them that the lab values actually get artificially increased. So you can see the results of this study where they took two different lab tests. One is an LC-MSMS or a mass spec assay. That's gonna be more accurate. And then you've got a standard, more of your standardized test, ELISA, EIA, amino assay. There are a few names that you can call this test. It's a standardized test. You can use either one very effectively if you're not on oral progesterone. But when you take oral progesterone, there's an artificial inflation to these more standard, basic, less accurate lab tests that artificially increase the value. Either way, by the time you get around to testing the progesterone, so let's say you take your progesterone at bedtime, 10 p.m., and it helps you sleep, and that's good. When you wake up in the morning, you rush off to get your blood tested, and the progesterone that has increased is already back to baseline, right? So there's really nothing to see in the test, and if there is something left to see, it's usually an artifact of those metabolites artificially pushing the laboratory value up. When you test saliva or blood 10 hours after the supplement is taken, there's not supposed to be any progesterone left. So what you do see is if the value is elevated a little bit above baseline, is probably just an artifact of those metabolites pushing that lab value up in a way that's really not accurate. So the lab value you see in the morning, it can be really irresponsible to go chasing some target value at a time when the progesterone has already passed through. So in the example that we have here, you can see a woman who takes increasing levels of oral progesterone, getting up to doses that are relatively high, over 300 milligrams, and yet the salivary value doesn't increase. Why? Because the progesterone isn't there to be tested at that point. It's not a good match to take oral progesterone at night and then use serum or saliva testing the next morning to follow the therapy. You can end up using doses that are much, much too high and in some cases irresponsible for your patient. Now, if we look at urine testing, we've got a completely different situation. Okay, the, the progesterone is gonna go where? Into the gut, and in the gut, it's gonna get turned into all of these different hormones. Well, one of the hormones that we make, and they're kind of a family of hormones called these alpha metabolites or allo metabolites, most famously, aloe or alpha pregnanolone. The reason that progesterone helps you sleep so much is this metabolite has a sedating effect. So if you take it, you get sleepy, which is great. If you take progesterone, as you can see from this study, a different way, in this study they're looking at vaginal hormone, vaginal progesterone versus oral progesterone, and because you're not hitting the gut with all that progesterone, you don't make that metabolite, so taking it vaginally doesn't help you sleep. Taking it orally does. So if you really think your way through that, in this sense, progesterone is acting like a pro-hormone. You take progesterone. Does progesterone help you sleep? Not really. It's the downstream metabolite, allopregnanolone, that helps you sleep, amongst the other uh, metabolites that help have this sedating effect. So there are other pathways that the progesterone can go down that have less of these effects. So what we can do in urine testing is we can look at these different metabolites. If I show you this example here, we have two women who are both on a similar dose of oral progesterone. And what you can see is for the one uh, patient, she's making a lot of the alpha metabolites. The alpha pregnane diol represents the alpha family of hormones. The other family is less active 
in terms of its biological activity, that's the beta pathway. And you can see the beta pregnant dial in these two cases, the distribution is very different. And that is what we're evaluating when patients take oral progesterone and we're using the Dutch model of testing to look at how they're metabolizing this hormone. And what we find is that women who get more of the sedating effect tend to push as you can see with this one example, down that alpha pathway and maybe less down the beta pathway. And those women can sometimes scale back the dosing a little bit uh, because they don't need as much oral progesterone to get the same clinical effect. So when you're looking at oral progesterone, a urine testing model gives you better information when you're looking at monitoring the dose. But the urine test has to include both the alpha, the active metabolites, as well as the beta metabolites. So we've added uh, the primary metabolite from both of those families of hormones, the alpha and the beta pathway. And we can use that again to evaluate how your body is processing the progesterone, which can help you in evaluating whether the therapy is appropriate or not. Now, if you wanna know about oral estrogens and DHEA, that's a completely different topic and it has to be handled a different way. And so there's another video that you can watch in the series that will address taking other oral hormones, but hopefully this has been helpful in helping you navigate testing questions as it relates to patients who are on oral progesterone.